Today, we are taking your health back with Wendy Lowe. We are coming to you from our studio in downtown Honolulu at the ThinkTech Hawaii Studios and from my home office in Makiki. I have with me a woman that needs no introduction as you've seen her on Nick's Plate for the past 35 plus years. Welcome, Pamela Young. All right, welcome, Pamela Young. So great to have you on the show. Hi, Wendy. Nice to see you again. Aloha. You have been hosting the Mixed Plate for over 35 plus years. How did that concept originate? It originated um, at KHON, where I'm back right now. Um, I had just returned from San Francisco. I was there for 13 years and got my start in television there. And then I got hired at KHON as a police reporter, of all things. And um, and every now and then I would do a feature story and our news director thought that this is the way to go, that this is what the newscast needed. He had just um, uh, bumped up Joe Moore from sports to main anchor. And, you know, Joe's sport is um, being able to talk about what the viewer has in mind. And he needed something to um, talk about at the end of the show. So the news director, Wally Zimmerman, asked me and Ray Lovell to come up with a signature feature piece. So that's how Mixed Plate was born. Wow. And what a great title, especially for Hawaii with all the plate lunches and all the variety and diversities of cultures. Perfect title. And that's why it's probably lasted for so long, along with you hosting it and doing such a fabulous job. So thank Thank you you. for creating it and having such longevity. So it's an icon to Hawaii alone and it's fabulous. Well, I think the name is is appropriate because mixed plate means just like a little bit of everything. And over the years, the show has evolved because it just started about like local um, events and, and the culture. And then people started writing in and saying, do more food stuff. (laughs) <laughs> and then later it was like, do more entertainment, do more fashion, do more travel. Wow. So over the years, it's changed. And so we've tried to adapt to those changes. Well, and you sure have, because you've been many, many places in many parts of the world. So let's get started. With all your travels, I have to ask you, Pamela, how do you maintain your health and your energy? It's it's not easy, but I think it starts <laughs> with preparation Um, You know, like any vacation you do, you pretty much know your itinerary. I have to really uh, be anal about this. Not only do I plan what's every day, but I try to do what's every hour. Because when you're traveling for a show with a cameraman, you can't go back two weeks later to get the shot that you you missed. So I try to do my research as much as possible. If I have enough prep time, I try to learn the language of the place that we're going to so that I can at least conduct a basic interview in that language. And then I see, you know, what stories are available. I make all the arrangements before, and that really helps. But even so, I have to admit, I have gotten sick on the road because there are some things you can't, you can't uh, prepare for. And one is fatigue. You're going to be tired. You, you're not going to sleep all that well. And it's you're you're doing your job 24-7. Um, there, there's no days off. Um, the One of the sickest I got was in China. Um, you know, I had, with altitude sickness, I had been in um, Chile uh, before at a 22,000 altitude and um, no problem. And then I went to Li Jiang, which is like at 18, and I was so sick. Wow. I just I just couldn't function. And wow. then in Belgium, I got um stomach problems because no one tell told me that they have unpasteurized milk. And my system just did not like that. <laughs> so I spent a couple of days in bed. <laughs> exactly. And you you nailed it. I mean, not just with milk, but even with the water. The water, the, you know, right? The quality of water in different parts of the world, sometimes it just doesn't do well with us. Or even like when you were in China or in Asia, a lot of people going over there because of the amount of oils that they're using. Um, Westerners going over to Eastern side, I mean, the oil just goes through our body and that causes diarrhea as well. And so, so many things, like you said, is unpredictable 
And plus, your energy level is so high. You're pumping up, and with the cameras rolling, and you're not, be, you know, just on your best. It's it's hard to maintain it twenty four seven. But you, in front of the camera, looks fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't show the bad parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, luckily, your um, cameraman doesn't follow you into the bathrooms and things no. like that. <laughs> Thank goodness, unless <laughs> it's so, scary. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the person I'm talking about. <laughs> you have a soulmate that inspires you daily so please share a little bit about that guy gary the cameraman your husband well you know gary and i anchored the channel 4 news for almost 20 years and yes. then when he retired from on-air work he wanted to do his own production um and so he learned um how to shoot and how to edit and, you know, we have a, a little facility at home where we try to do our own productions. And most of the mixed plates, we we shoot and we edit right here. So, um, so yeah, so now he's my, he's my chief engineer. He's my photographer. He's, you know, my consultant. So, uh, and thankfully the 20 years before that, you know, we worked really well together. So it all comes together. Right. Yes. You had a great, you have a great relationship in the beginning and still. And so that working relationship, I mean, you know, everyone must say, ask you, how do you do it? You live with him and you work with him. Does that get difficult at times, Pamela? Well, you know, when we were anchoring, we were together like all the time. Right. And what really helped is that I had mixed plate and he had Pacific Adventures. So when I went off on a trip, he wasn't always the cameraman. So I'd have that time off and then he'd go off and shoot his own stuff. And so, and plus in a newsroom, you know, we'd come to work together and then he'd have his job and I'd have my job. And we really wouldn't be together until like five o'clock when we'd have to be on set. So there was that space. And so, yeah, that's my recommendation. You know, you need space. Yes. You need your, your own time together. And I need a lot of alone time because I do a lot of writing by myself. And, and he does too. His, you know, his passion is golf. So that's, that's his time. So, yeah. So, yeah. And so when we do come together, it just, it works. Yes. Well, obviously you're doing something right. You guys look very happy after all these years, not just being husband and wife, but business partners and professional partners as well. So congratulations to you, too. You have a special dynamics between the two of you. Thanks. I also understand that both of you, um, you had some health challenges. And if you don't mind just sharing, you touch upon it a little bit with uh, what you in, in, in experience with your health. Well, about 12 years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's when I had decided to go part time. Mm -hmm. And that's when Gary decided to uh, retire. And so he could take care of me and, you know, and I would have the, the time to recuperate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was diagnosed just a couple of months after our our receptionist was diagnosed. So we were kind of cancer sisters. Oh. You know, she was having mm -hmm. chemo. Um, on the top floor and I was on of Queens and I was on the bottom floor getting radiation. So wow. it was really um, interesting and really supportive to have that, that, uh, that other person there going through the same process because you do need help. Right. And, and, uh, and, you know, Gary's had some knee surgeries that he's had to go through. So, you know, we just, <laughs> it's the, it's the Age thing, you know, we all go right. through it. And right. um, and then um, let's say about three years ago, I had a stroke and um, fortunately it was very, very minor and didn't, you know, impact my cognitive abilities. Yes. And uh, but it was, you know, it just taught me to be a little more careful and deal with stress a little better. That's the main thing. Stress. Right. Exactly. If you can deal with that, um, that's that's the culprit a lot of a lot of disease is stress. Yeah. So, but you also hit one very uh, crucial part about when you were going through your cancer and your your partner or your teammate also was going through that experience. But what you said is we all need a friend. We all need a buddy mm -hmm. through experience, the good and the bad, you know, and um, just someone to just talk story, because especially at that time, she didn't have it before you or after you. She had it with you. And so that made it even more special because you both were pretty much 
you know, you could share your experiences of what you felt. And yes, Gary was there, but he wouldn't know, but she would. So you were blessed to have that buddy. I, I, I really was. And one of the things about, um, about women with breast cancer, because men can get it too, but when yeah. women, when we get sick, you know, we're, we're like cats. We want to go away and hide in a little hole and deal with it ourselves. And we don't really want to share our anxiety and our pain with our families because we know they take on the burden as well. And so we tend not to share it with them, but with a a fellow, you know, cancer um, sufferer, it's, it's okay to, to share those, those uh, feelings and and to you know walk through them together so it, it was really helpful and that's why i um you know i really support coleman because that's a network system where you yes. can meet other people survivors and patients and you know help them along with their journey and find a buddy yeah, find <laughs> that's a buddy. so important so important so pamela the world knows that your passion for television work is just immense but you also have other are artistic talents Um, that you don't often talk about as long as I know, but please share with us, what are they? Well, um, I, you know, when I graduated from high school, I knew I wanted to be a journalist, but then when I got to college, um, this is the time when a chorus line hit Broadway and there's a song (laughs) called what I did for love. And, and what I, and I realized I went through this, you know, epiphany, what I really did for love was I wanted to dance. And I had been studying for decades and I thought that's what I really wanted just for a little while. So I majored (laughs) in dance and and then I got a a a BA and an MA in dance thinking that afterwards I might want to teach. And and then I danced professionally for a few years. And then when I felt I was too old to dance at the age of 27, you know, I decided I better get back into journalism. So <laughs> that's how I got back to it. But I try to dance whenever I can. It's not yeah. the same body I had back then, <laughs> but, you know, I do what I can and I love movement. And I've been able to do some shows with um, with Manoa Valley Theater and Diamond Head Theater. Wow, special. That That's that's a creative side and you need that outlet as well. So, and then uh, Pamela, I know that you've done more than, or you've produced more than a hundred mixed plate specials. I just have to ask you, is there anyone that's really close to your heart? Well, I always like to say that the the best one is the next one <laughs> because, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think ahead, but there are so many that are, that are close to my heart, but there, there's one in particular that was shot here that I think kind of sums up where I am spiritually at this point. Mm-hmm. And, and I think you have it. And I think actually you're in it. Yes. <laughs> when you send this clip to me and I, I viewed it, I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's me. So we, I made a cameo in yours and no, you're making a, a guest appearance in mine. So thank you so much, Pamela, Sue, for choo- I mean, Pamela for, for choosing that one. It so, was meant to be. Yes. Thank you so much. And Eric, if we could please share that video now. We live by the elements, the earth, the wind, the ocean, the water. When we do a blessing, it's the energy you receive because that's part of the elements. When you touch the water, my energy was shared with you. Everybody has a little bit of a problem. And when I say the prayer, that's to help them to heal. I'm very vulnerable at this time because I'm a cancer survivor, HIV survivor, and I really need to cleanse everything. And I struggle constantly with the idea of being an island girl or having a profession and being a working woman. It's hard to find the balance between tradition and being contemporary. We were blessed with the seal today. 
They very seldom come into this particular pond, which is Aniyaniku. But this one made a great effort, and she came over, and she stayed. When we call them in Hawaiian, they look. I don't know if they understand, but they look and listen. Hey, mama, yoi. The thousands of ripples here is about forgiveness. If we can learn to forgive ourselves and forgive others, this world would be such a more beautiful place. We need to have this blessing, the spiritual energy to share with everybody, especially with the coming year. I just saw that for the first time uh, yesterday and I was just crying my eyeballs out and I thought I'm glad that I watched it yesterday. Otherwise, if I saw it today, I'd be crying even deeper than I am now. So Pamela, you really um, impacted uh, many feelings in uh, many people that are going to be watching that even further from now. And so share a little bit about how it impacted you. I mean, it was, I think it was a blessing that we all needed Yes. It it came at a time, and I mean, you know, we always have stress in our lives, but I think that particular time there were there were a lot of people going through a lot of heavy stuff, mm -hmm. and sometimes you just need to take a breather and to to be with nature, and especially you know to to be with a with a wise uh, with a wise person like she was. Yes, and, absolutely. you know, it was a remarkable experience, and I was so glad to share it with everyone. Right. I mean, even just being in the water and being cleansed with the water, you know, um, and then when that seal came, that was incredible. And it came, and it stayed, and it didn't want to leave us. Yeah. And, yeah, and it kept looking when she called, and it came to us, and it went back. And it wasn't, like, frightened or wanting to run away and get back to the sea. It stayed in that pond, and Auntie Nettie says... They don't normally come into the pond that close and feel so relaxed. So yeah, it was it was it was really a blessing. <laughs> it is, and that, yeah, the Kyoko was blessing all of us through that seal, and so we should just take some time to really just be still in the water mm -hmm. or in life, and and release all that stress and cleanse it out of our systems. We need another one. Yes, let's do it, girl. <laughs> so, Pamela, I have a photo of your young of a, of a young family. So, I don't who know I don't know who are, they are, but please share with us who they are. Okay, that's our son Paulo mm -hmm. and his wife Emily and our granddaughter Luna, and uh, they live in um, Nevada, California. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the general manager of the San Francisco Zoo. Wow. And I wish they were closer, but, yeah. you know, things being what they are and with the economy, um, they've had to stay in San Francisco um, in the Bay Area, which is, you know, just about as expensive, if not more yes. than Hawaii. So, you know, they're they're trying to make their way through life. But we're that's the love of our lives at this point. Wow. Well, congratulations. I'm so proud of, of what he's accomplished as well. And you have a little grandbaby. Wow, yeah. you got Mopuna. All right. So, you know, many of us have, I've seen snakes, you know, many times. And I know wherever you travel, you try to look for the incredible. But <laughs> what I want to know is when you saw those snakes, what was your experience like when you saw the snake and their charmers, the snake charmers? Well, this was in India. <laughs> and uh, we spent about 10 days there. Um, shooting um, around uh, New Delhi and Jaipur and Agra. And uh, we, I think we just came out of um, the Taj Mahal and there were these snake charmers that were sitting there. <laughs> and so, you know, I asked, can I join you? And they said, oh, sure, come on, sit down. <laughs> so I sat and, you know, I mean, with them there, you feel perfectly safe. <laughs> I mean, I was I was hoping no one would ask me, can you pick one up? I mean, I was not going to do that. But um, yeah, of all the experiences I've had, that was not too scary. So I trusted them. It was uh, Because you were with professionals. With right. professionals. And of course, you know, they're there because they want money. Right. And that's fine. We gave them a tip. 
<laughs> of course. And like I said, you got to work with your buddy. And those are their buddies, the snake and the charmers, their buddies. Right. So, and you're in good hands. Yes. So I would also like for you to share a little bit with Chinese New Year coming along. Share with us your experience and time in China. Well, I've been to um, China several times and to Hong Kong several times, mm -hmm. um, less so in the past few years because the political situation is is yes. not that terrific. And so um, that particular picture was in 1997 when Hong Kong was returned to oh, China. Right. So we were we knew, you know, all the other film crews were going to Hong Kong to shoot something. Right. But we wanted to go to Beijing because that's where the big celebration is. I don't know if you've been to Hong Kong, you know, yes. it's a very narrow strip on an island. And yes. so there really is no place for a, for a lot of people to gather. But right. in Beijing, this was in Tiananmen Square and they, they squeezed in a quarter million people oh, yeah. in the square. So, <laughs> so we were there. I was there with cameraman Dan Sherma. Wow. And uh, we were told, I mean, the restrictions were so incredible. We had to be there 12 hours before. <sighs> and um, and there were there were there was no food, there oh. were no bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> And so, you know, I I brought our stash of of protein bars and a, a little bit of water. And we were once we got there, we were told be in this one place, don't move. Yeah. And you know, and we just we didn't want to get arrested, right? <laughs> because the once you get arrested by the Chinese police, I'm sorry, it's adios. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, so we we stayed in the square for quite a few hours, and then. Um, finally, you know, things started to loosen up. The dancers came and people were wandering uh, around. And I told my cameraman, let's just go. And I said, you know, I and he said, you know, you stay here because if a policeman comes up to me, he's going to talk to me in Chinese and tell me the rules. But, you know, he's Holly. So I said, yeah. just go. OK, go. And sure enough, you know, he's walking around shooting and police come up to him and he goes, huh? <laughs> and they left him alone because he couldn't speak the language and yeah. they think, okay he's a dumb foreigner let him go <laughs> wow. so that's how we got the shots wow <laughs> well, good to play yeah good to play that role the quailo right yeah. the white girl is the quailo wow so okay now getting back to your dance i know that that's your passion for you know your dance but I just feel I wanted to just share with you that I, I want to just tell you to just go and dance more. So I wanted to ask you, how often are you able to consume yourself in your dance? Well, since COVID, I, I was taking, um, you know, classes at Diamond Head Theater. And so one thing about being a dancer, you never stop taking class. Yes. It's one of the things that lasts you for the rest of your life. Even yes. though you become a professional at some stage, you always take class to keep yourself limber. Uh, but with COVID, um, those classes went virtual. And then um, and then after a while, I had to um, take classes uh, online from uh, from different places. And I still do because I still don't feel totally comfortable in a room um, with other people. And it's very difficult to dance with a mask. So, which I would have to do if I went to my gym. Mm -hmm. So I, I just try to do it that way. Uh, but um, that's that's about it. I mean, I can't, you know, and I just, I have to, you know, accept the fact I don't have the body I had when I was 18. There's certain mm -hmm. things that I can't do. This is when I was 19. Wow, so. look at that spread. That's a beautiful pose. And this was in San Francisco, my first year uh, at San Francisco State. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I can't do that anymore, but it doesn't matter. I still right. try to do what I can and, you know, and move with, with music. And that's the main thing. Just move. Wow. That's the main thing is just move, not as extreme, but just keep moving, even just simple leg lifts and whatever sure. you, you can do. And I'm sure that you at your age can do much more than anybody else your age because of your dance history. And that's the beautiful part. 
I, I try. It, 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 it doesn't always happen without pain. But you know, but you know what they say, wait, no pain, no gain. That's true. That's true. But yeah, you know, we try to get some exercise at least every day. Yes, good. So do can you just share a little bit of what's coming out of um, the next mixed plate or what are your uh, future projects you're working on? Can you share or not? Well, uh, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, when COVID happened, I mean, usually I try to plan at least a year ahead or at least have, you know, a few nibbles out there to see where I might go. Mm -hmm. But with COVID, we had to take it one month at a time because travel hasn't totally um, come back to normal around the world. So mm -hmm. we do have some nibbles out, but we have to wait for the situation to get a little better, a little more normal, a little healthier um, for us to really plan. Um, I do have um, something, we're working with a children's theater right now that may be doing some traveling and taking their production on the road. And I'm very excited about that because, um, you know, they're the future and right. they're, they're the future singers and dancers. And these kids are so talented. So um, they're all in Ohana Arts Theater. So hopefully I'll be able to do that, knock on wood. Wow. Uh, and, you know, and these days this, the economic situation is very different. We right. used to be able to just call up an airline or a hotel and say, we're going here. Can you sponsor us? And mm -hmm. they'd say, sure. And then, you know, we would do a trade of some sort. And now right. it's, it, you know, their economic situation is very different. So we have to walk a, a fine line there, too. Wow. Well, we're excited to always see when your next um, mixed plate or our production is coming along. But um, we've run out of time for now, Pamela. And I'm just so grateful that we had the time to capture you, your heart. Um, on this impromptu interview versus on your mixed plate where you're going and jetting all over the world so I can see you here relaxing in your element. But, thank you. Um, and, thank <laughs> you. And we didn't need to speak a foreign language either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We would need definite uh, subtitles, but we'll have to leave us for now. You And um, you've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii. So mahalo to Pamela Young. Thank you for talking story with us here in Hawaii and the world and for bringing the world to us via mixed plate. And please keep on dancing like no one is watching you. Okay, just keep dancing, girl. No one's watching behind your doors, but you know. All right. So I'm Wendy Lowe, and I want to just welcome you back for another edition in a couple of weeks to Taking Your Health Back with me. So aloha and mahalo, Pamela Young. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.